So we're going to do this question on Euclidean geometry and I'm going to show you a strategy that you can use to answer all kind of questions in Euclidean geometry. This strategy doesn't only work for this question, but it works for any Euclidean geometry question. So the most important thing in Euclidean geometry is the reading the statement. That's the most crucial part. If uh, there's a question where uh, reading the statement is important, then this is definitely one of them. So without wasting more time, uh, let me just go ahead and read the question. So it is saying that in the diagram PK, in the diagram PK is a tangent to the circle at K. So we know that uh, there's a lot uh, that a tangent means in uh, Euclidean geometry. We have the tan chord theorem. So a uh, tangent is a keyword. So we're going to say uh, one and then we say tangent, right? This is part of the strategy because tangent is a keyword. I promise you, after you're done watching this video, you're going to be able to do all other problems in Euclidean geometry. And then it said the chord LS is produced uh, to P. So if you look at the uh, left hand side, uh, you can see chord LS here is chord LS here. And then this chord LS, a chord is also important in Euclidean geometry because we know that it subtends an angle of 90 degrees, right? So let's go ahead and write uh, chord. And then um, it says, as produced to P, N, M, N and M are points on K, P and S, P respectively, such that M, N is perpendicular to S, K. Uh, oh, not perpendicular, <laughs> I meant parallel. So now we have uh, parallel lines, right? We know that as soon as we have parallel lines, uh, that means so much to us uh, when we are doing Euclidean geometry. So we're going to have that there. And then it goes on to say chord KS and LN intersect at T. And then now to start answering our questions, we have 11.2.1 and then uh, we have A. So all the questions that you are going to answer, we're going to answer them using only these three uh, keywords, nothing else. So when you have a question, and you're trying to find which angle is which, you have to go through only these three keywords and nothing else. And you're going to be able to answer uh, all questions. So um, A says prove that K4 equals to um, NML, right? So let's see if we can do that using the first keyword. Uh, which is tangent, right? So um, K4 uh, is between a chord and a tangent, right? So by the tan chord theorem, K4 should be equals to S1, right? But is S1 an ML? No, it's not. So um, the tangent cannot help us to use uh, to determine uh, to prove that K4 is equal to NML. Let's move to number two. Number two is chord. Uh, chord, we used it with the tangent, so it also cannot help us. Let's move to number three, which is uh, parallel lines. So we can see that um, NM is parallel to uh, TS, right? If they are parallel, then that means that N2 is equal to this angle T here. And it means that uh, this angle here is equal to um, this angle uh, S here, right? So we have already uh, seen it that K4 is equal to S1 because of turn chord, right? Turn chord. Uh, but then that doesn't show that K4 is equal to NML. But when we're using parallel lines, our third keyword, we see that S1 equals to NML because uh, the two are corresponding angles, right? So that would imply that K4 is equals to 
and ml as both are equals to s1 right so you can see we used uh parallel lines and the turn code theorem and is the keywords we have as we go on all the other questions too we're going to answer them sticking to the keywords right and then uh we have b b says uh prove that k l m n is a, a cyclic quadrilateral right so we have uh k l m n and we're supposed to prove that it's a cyclic quadrilateral so in a cyclic quadrilateral uh, and it has one mark in a cyclic quadrilateral an exterior angle is equal to opposite interior right so this angle here uh, let me highlight it in red should be equal to this one and this one here should be equal to this one so we have already proved that k4 is equal to an ml right so by proving that we have proved that uh k n m l is a cyclic quad now the reason that we are going to give is that an exterior angle of a cyclic quad is equal to opposite interior so we're saying that uh k4 is equal to an ml right now let me uh clear yeah our diagram and then we can move forward and then now let's move forward to um 11.2.2 which says prove given reasons that a triangle l k n is similar to triangle k s m right now let me give you um a trick uh, when the examiner examiners set these kind of questions they set them in such a way that uh the way they name them is uh relative to the angles that are equal so this angle l in triangle l k n will be equals to this angle to the angle k in triangle k s m right and then the letter that follows will also be equal to the letter that follows right so the last letter will be angle n uh, being equals to angle m right so every time when you are writing an examination they don't just name the triangles randomly they name them relative to the angles that are equal so let me go ahead and highlight our triangles so we have angle triangle l uh, k n right um let me just try do it better l k n and a triangle a ksm so based on the trick that i'm giving you guys that would mean that this angle uh l1 here it is equals to angle uh k2 here and then angle um in triangle lk and angle uh lkn uh, this entire angle here will be equals to angle um s2 right and then the remaining angles will be equal n3 will be equals to m3 we know that angle k4 uh, plus angle l k n is equals to angle s1 uh, plus angle s2 right that's because they are all equals to 180 right and 180 degrees because they are angles in a straight line we have already established that angle k4 is equals to angle s1 because of the turn code theorem right so that will tell us that angle l k n is equals to angle s2 right so now we have proved uh one angle uh, we have proved that uh, those two angles are equal so if we can prove uh, that uh, other two angles are equal then we have proved uh, the similarity of the two triangles 
Another angle uh, or pair of angles that you can use to prove the similarities, uh, we can see that angle N3 is equal to angle M3, right? Uh, why am I seeing that they are subtended uh, by KL, uh, which is a common code, right? Why? Okay, so let me highlight a uh, KL. So this is KL here, and it is subtending um, N3 and subtending M3. But what you can say is that, oh, but they're not in the same cycle. Uh, so why are we saying that they have been subtended by uh, the same line? We are saying that because in 11.2.1b, uh, we prove that KLMN is a cyclic uh, quad, right? So if we have that privilege, then we can say that angle N3 uh, is equal to angle M3 because uh, they are subtended by the same uh, line, right? So from there, we can then conclude that uh, triangle LKN is similar to triangle KSM because angle angle and angle if two angles in a triangle in two different triangles are equal then the, th the third angle is definitely gonna be equal because the sum of every of angles in every triangle add up to 180. so let's move ahead and go to 11.2.3 uh, uh, which says that if lk is equal to 12 and we have 3kn uh, being equals to 4sm and uh, determine the length of uh, ks so let's go and find those lines in our diagram right so again let me cl clear it up so that we can start afresh so we have line um lk right let me use a green pen instead, line L king. And then we have line uh, KN, which is another line of interest. And then we have line SM. And then we're supposed to find, um, we're supposed to find K KS. You can see that uh, these four lines that we have, they lie on the triangles of which we just prove that they're similar so if triangles are similar then we can definitely use uh, proportionality right uh, to determine the ratio of uh, the size or to determine uh, the length of a side so we can see that um, lk in triangle um, lkn uh, divided by ks in triangle uh, KSM is equals to KN uh, divided by um, SM. We can only see that if um, the triangles are similar to each other uh, like we have just uh, proved. So uh, what is uh, the length of LK? The length of LK is 12. What's the length of KS? It's what we are interested in. And this is all equals to uh, what is the length of KN? KN is given um, in, it is said that 3KN is equals to 4SM. So if we make KN the subject of the formula, we're going to get KN is equals to 4SM divided by 3 so in place of kn we're gonna have 4 divided by 3 sm and then everything divided by sm so sm and sm are gonna cancel out <coughs> we're gonna be left with 12 uh, divided by ks equals to 4 divided by 3 so now we can cross multiply we're gonna get 4 ks equals to 12 multiplied by 3 so we have ks equals to 12 uh, multiplied by 3 
everything divided by 4 uh, which is equals to um, 9 uh, units because we don't know what that's meters kilometers or whatsoever so now we can move to 11.2.4 11.2.4 says that nl equals to 16 units and then ls equals to 13 units and then kn equals to 8 units and then we're supposed to determine lt let's look at where they are located in our diagram again i'm gonna start by clearing it up right so i have nl and then i have um ls which is equal to 13 and then i have kn which is equal to 8 and then i have l t which i'm supposed to uh determine right so you can see that uh, most of our lines are in these two two triangles in triangle l k s uh let me use a different color a uh, triangle l k s and triangle l um l n m right so if you look at these triangles uh, we have perpendicular lines here right so by the proportionality theorem if we have these two perpendicular lines uh, then triangle l k m uh, will be similar to triangle l t s right now let me clear it up a bit so that we can see uh, what is going on so um if that is true so we can see that l t uh, divided by l n is equals to l s divided by l m so what is l t l t is our unknown and then what is l n l n is given as 16 right and then what is l s l s is said to be 13 and then what is l m hmm now it seems like we have a problem we have an l m which is um unknown but wait a minute we can see that uh l m is equals to l s plus s m right and then now that we have the value of k n we can determine s m so we're gonna have l m equals to l s l s is said to be 13 right uh, plus s m what is s m we are given that uh, 3 k n equals to 4 s m so s m equals to 3 k n divided by 4 so 3 multiplied by 8 uh, divided by 4 right so there we have it we can go back to our equation so this will be plus uh, 3 multiplied by 8 divided by 4 uh, let me erase this so that we can carry on so we're gonna have lt uh, divided by 16 equals to 13 uh, divided by 13 plus 3 multiplied by 8 divided by 4 uh, now we can cross multiply and then uh, divide right uh, to make lt the subject to the formula at the end of the day we're gonna get lt uh, is equals to 16 multiplied by 13 divided by 13 plus 3 multiplied by 8 divided by 4 uh, which i'm just gonna put in my calculator real quick and see what i get so just give me a second so we have 16 multiplied by 13 uh, divided by 13 plus 3 multiplied by 8 divided by 4 which is giving me a fraction which is very weird 